the moment distribution method is calculated on the basis that the stress can be freely transferred from one end of the continuous beam to another end. Throughout the continuous member, there will be internal forces which counteract each other at the support. The continuous member are initially analyzed as a separate members. From the separate members, we determine their fixed end moment individually. Due to the various aspects such as the loading and the effective length, which varies between different segments of the beam, the fixed end moment as the internal force at each side of the support will differ. The differences between the fixed end moment will later be carried over to the another end of the members. Should the other end also having a differences between the fixed end moment at different sites, the additional moment will again be transferred back to the other joint. The process of the stress being carried over will be continuously repeated on and on until the fixed end moment at each support becomes stable. This means that the internal stresses here can counter edge each other and the summations of the fixed end moment from the both sides of the support will be equal to zero. Through this, we will more or less consolidate the fixed end moment after the moment distributions. This consolidated fixed end moment will be determined as the final internal moment acting on the member. Then, at the later stage of the design, the continuous beams are to be designed to resist these fixed end moments. After understanding the basic principles behind the moment distribution methods, next you need to know a few terminologies. The stiffness, the fixed end moment, and the distribution factors. The stiffness is referring to the section property of the continuous member. It is defined by the modulus or elasticity, the second moment or initial, and also the effective length of the members. The support conditions will also affect its stiffness. For a continuous member, the end supports are normally assumed to be pink and the continuous part is considered as fixed. That means, whichever the internal moment developed at one side will trigger another reaction in terms of the internal moment from the other side. This leads to two possibilities of a support conditions of a segment of the continuous member. The stiffness is equal to 4 times EI per L for both ends are fixed. This is referring to this segment, this segment and this segment. For the member one end fix another end pin, the stiffness will be equal to 3 EI per L. It is applied at this segment, this segment, this, 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 and also this. Determining the stiffness of the segment of a continuous beam is very important. As theoretically, 
a higher degree of stiffness will carry a larger portions of the moment acting at the joint in another word the moment acting at the joint is shared between the segment of the continuous beam based on the weightage of its stiffness for a typical continuous beam of an identical size the E modulus of elasticity will be the same as the entire beam is made of the same material which is concrete if the size of the beam is the same throughout the second moment or initial of the both segments it will also be the same the only thing that governs the stiffness it will be is effective length the stiffness reduces as the length increases while it increases as the length reduces based on the rationale that the stiffness represents the weightage that the segment need to carry for the internal moment for a continuous bank with identical material identical cross-sectional area and identical length the moment acting at the joint here should theoretically be half taken by one side another half taken by the other side if the effective length of the segment differs the weightage of the moment will redistribute a larger moment will be carried by the member of shorter span as the stiffness will be higher this redistribution of the moment in accordance to the weightage of the stiffness is known as the distribution factors it is basically expressed as the stiffness of the particular segment divided by the total stiffness of both segments the larger its weightage will carry more moment the summations of both should theoretically be the same as the total moment to be taken at this joint the equations for fixed end moment is given in the general form in these equations as the end supports are normally assumed to be pink that means there won't be any moment being carried by the end support with that the distribution factors will be equals to zero. Next, we discuss the fixed end moment. The fixed end moment is dependent on the loading, the span, and also the support conditions. Different conditions will lead to different degree of fixed end moment. The equations for the fixed end moment can easily be obtained from the typical tables for the fixed end moment. The slide here outlines different types of fixed end moment under several typical conditions of loading, which is commonly encountered in RC structures. There are much more equations for different variety types of the load setup you may obtain the full list of the equations easily from the internet just type in the keyword fixed end moment formula and for this different kind of the support conditions for example, both end fix or one end fix another end pin. The equations for the fixed end moment differs. The pin support normally do not have fixed end moment. 
The fixed end moment also differ when the UDL is applied throughout the length or is applied partial of the member. It is also different when you have the point load at the mid span or the point load at different positions. You may use the equations of fixed end moment freely by using the principles of superpositions. For example, that you need to analyze the structures is subjected to an UDL load and the point load together. The total fixed end moment due to these two types of load will be the summations of the two. After you have obtained the stiffness, the fixed end moment and the distribution factors for the continuous member, you will proceed with the calculation that the moments to be carried over to the next support. The process of carrying over the moment to the adjacent support will stop when the moments to be carried over are relatively small in comparison to the overall moment. You will get a clearer picture in terms of the analysis from the examples that to be discussed in the next video.